All right, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Uh, we may have a low turnout on the Linden side. A lot of folks taking the day off after the holiday. Um, so this may be all we're getting, or we may have one or two other folks dropping in subsequently. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll try to run through on where we are with uh, with viewer things. Um, biggest biggest news since the last of these meetings would be the release of uh, of uh, featurettes as the default viewer so uh, you know that gives us some large graphics changes we've got mirrors we've got PBR terrain uh, um, uh, there's what else that I'm forgetting 2k textures 2k textures yeah few people are interested in those um yeah so uh that's out uh, a big part of that has been trying to address high priority bugs um obviously we're going to continue working on bugs you know beyond this release but uh we wanted to get some of the stuff out there with that with that build um we are changing our process a bit for viewers uh trying to work more off of a kind of single development branch. Hopefully that means that uh, bug fixes and contributions will show up in released viewers faster. Um, we won't have as many sort of different parallel viewer releases vying for, uh, vying for promotion at the same time, uh, but it's, it's early days yet. We're still kind of getting the, the process nailed down, and we still have quite a few existing viewers that aren't using that system yet. We have uh, uh, we have several mate releases, we've got the WebRTC viewer, um, and those are all kind of uh, still sort of living on parallel tracks and won't be fully integrated with the, with the new sort of development trunk approach uh, until, until those get shipped. Um, so uh, yeah, keep an eye out as the as the changes go. But in any case, uh, you know we are still happy to take contributions, and we do have a place to put them. Um, and uh, we are continuing to work on uh, you know bug fixes, uh, uh, you know small feature changes, um, and and as I mentioned, the WebRTC viewer is still in the pipeline. Uh, that's that's going to replace. Uh, Vivox Voice with the uh, with the new the WebRTC based system um, seems to be working pretty well now. But uh, you know the it needs to get out to all the viewers, including including third party viewers, and you know then we can sort of throw the switch and switch all the regions over to using that system. Um, so in the works, but not out there. Uh, not out there yet. Uh, let's see. I th I think those are the main topics for uh, you know upcoming viewer work. Uh, let's see. I see Roxy. See Roxy. Do you want to say anything else about uh, kind of how things are going with WebRTC and what the the plans are? Um. Yeah. Um. So yeah, things are coming along pretty good. We're uh... You know, uh, we've stabilized a bunch and, uh, you know, been uh, putting it out there for you all to pick up. Um, right now, we're we're hoping to kind of wrap things up and deploy um, in the, the August time frame. If uh, it's line up right, that's that's our next, uh, the, uh, the server schedule for deployments is looking like it's going to be around then. And uh, just a note, it will be, you know, a staged deployment to the RCs and then to the main grid as, as it often is. And there will be some awkwardness during that transition period, um, specifically with the uh, peer-to-peer ad hoc and group voice. You know, if you make calls from Web or RTC region to people who are on uh, VBox region, it may or may not uh, work quite like you think. Um, it, it would uh, normally, but that's only going to be for a short period of time. The you know, main thing is we just uh, making that all work 
smoothly would have taken more time than the transition period so they kind of uh, chose to uh, just go for it and get it out there quickly as opposed to taking a bunch of time to make things uh, integrate cleanly um, Uh, yeah, the uh, patchiness, usually it takes, you know, uh, a couple of weeks for us to roll out to an RC, then maybe a, a bunch of RC channels, and then to main grid. So that will be peer-to-peer, um, -peer, ad hoc, and group only, the, the, uh, the uh, spatial, you know, region-based voice, the proximal voice, will be... Uh, functional and the viewers you know our viewer and if you pull our stuff uh, your viewers will be able to handle both webrtc and vbox during that transitional period all right yeah. sounds great um let's see uh Cosmic, do you want to talk about what's going on in the graphics team lately? Uh, sure. Um, uh, so uh, there was definitely uh, quite a uh, s scramble. Um, just wanted to give some appreciation out to the uh, Firestorm folks uh, for for a for the PBR release in time for uh, SLB. Um, uh, we've d definitely been aware of some reports of performance issues. Dave P in particular has been uh, looking into ways to uh, reduce memory usage as that seems to be a performance bottleneck, particularly on lower end machines. Uh, Geens has been continuing work on various uh, GLTF extensions. Uh, I believe uh, they're wrapping up GLTF transmission right now. As for me, uh, I just wrapped up uh, some PBR uh, PBR train smaller feature uh, to allow for specifying uh, uh, the uh, GLTF texture transforms um, on PBR train. One transform per material, so not quite the full Monty that you'd get for Prims, but should be enough to do some interesting stuff. Uh, and I will be working on PBR train painting next. Uh, do you want to talk a bit about how the train painting is, is being envisaged? Um, yes, I can. Uh, so this is still very, very, very early stages. Uh, so I, I have nothing to demo. This is uh, very, very much beginning of development. Uh, what I am envisaging is um, is uh, you would still have the uh, four four you you still have the four materials, uh, and what the train paint would allow you to do is to specify how these four materials are mixed together. So rather than just being at the mercy of the height map and the noise that's applied on top of it, being able to have control over that. Um, the permissions for this will be similar to uh, terrain height control, so if you can uh, edit the uh, terrain heights for your parcel, uh, terrain painting will be available as well. So if if I'm understanding it right, the idea is that um, if if you have a paint if you have a paint map, then that is what you use to define the blending between the the four sort of key terrain maps instead of doing it with the sort of altitude based system that we that we do currently. Is that right? Yes, um, yes, and so you'd be able to say, I want grass over here and dirt over here. And I want rock, rock, the rock, uh, the rock material over over here, um, and you should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah that sounds very cool. So, what uh, 
we obviously we may not know the answer to this yet, but do we know what resolution we're targeting? Like, how much how much detail are we going to be shooting for in the in the sort of blending map? Is this like a, you know kind of one one texture at the level of a region, or is it something more sort of fine grained than um, that? I I think it will likely be one texture at the level of the region. Uh, at least for the first uh, for the first phase, um, I, I think with uh, with uh, depending on uh, what we do, but I think uh, one texture one texture for the paint map for terrain, um, and the resolution is is kind of not decided yet. So um, so uh, we'll see. Um, uh, we we do st support 2K textures now, so I could see it being 2K, but I'm gonna have to play around with it, see what see uh yeah. see what level of uh, detail is needed. This is a little tricky from an implementation standpoint because, you know, for, conceptually it's it's you know it's just a pixel grid like other pixel grids, but it doesn't really match our model for what a texture is because it's not static right it's it's a it's a new kind of entity that can be modified yeah it. it most certainly will not be stored on the asset server i can i can tell you that that much um i i, I think uh i think uh, leviathan has offered to uh, tag ping with me on the uh, server work so uh so we'll see there Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, I think you mentioned there's some similarity to the to the height map controls, which also, you know, are a sort of a 2D array of of stuff, but they're not really textures either. All right. Well, uh, I think that's about it for. Uh, announcements this week so we can kind of throw the the floor open for questions on uh, whatever topics people want to ask about or things they want to discuss Branch promoted next. Yeah, don't don't know the. Um, I think mate uh, mate B is in pretty good shape. Uh, it's got a good crash rate. Um, you know, obviously WebRTC is uh, something we're interested in getting out to. Uh, so could be one of those, but as usual, it depends on uh, you know priority as well as uh, as well as stability. RLVA, yeah, we're we're, uh, we're actively uh, talking about that now. The um, uh, don't don't know timing yet, uh, but it is it is definitely on our roadmap, and we we want to get it into the viewer. It's it's a big change. There's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of stuff that needs to be pulled in to make to make everything work. So it's it's likely to be something that uh, you know, gets gets you know kind of pulled in and and uh, deployed incrementally just for reasons of scope. Um, but you know, nonetheless, the the goal is that we actually want to support the whole feature set, and that that'll be the the end state that we're that we're targeting. A uh, question about exposing terrain painting capability to server-side scripting. I'm not sure if we've really talked about that yet. Cosmic, do you do you know um, if that's uh, come up a lot? You know, I think or? I think that's an open question. Um, I'd love to hear uh, suggestions about how 
how it could be used because I think that'll help help uh, help us just determine the scope there. That being said, I do think it'd be a really cool idea. Scripted weather system is interesting. We we talked a little bit about uh, uh, kind of being able to swap textures around to for kind of seasonal stuff too, and you know get kind of fall fall look versus a summer look or whatever might be one one mechanism. And being able to uh, fully, uh, I don't know, fully seasonalize through scripts would be a would be a bigger project. Of course, it's not just swapping some textures around, but you've got to be able to, uh, you know, swap content as well. I would think. Ignores cough. Okay, we we'll have to take a look at that. I'm, I'm not familiar with the distinction there. Specifically targeting Apple Silicon? Uh, not yet. We don't, uh, you know, we don't really have a, a build specifically targeting that platform. But um, it, we, you know, we are looking at how performance varies across, you know, a range of different systems. You know, lower memory or fewer cores or you know, more cores or whatever the case may be. Um, so probably we're going to wind up looking at some of that just in the context of, you know, performance on, on different sort of types of types of systems. But uh, longer term, you know, it, it, it would be likely that we'd be having, uh, uh, you know, things to really take advantage of the, of the platform to a greater extent. No, I'm all in suspense. Oh, that looks nice. Uh, yeah, be, uh, very interested in uh, getting a contribution on that if you've got uh, got stuff that improves the performance. We like improving performance.
<laughs> Triple the frame rate, okay, that's a lot. We don't have a ton of uh, AMD hardware kicking around here, but uh, it's certainly, certainly on the radar. Well, Kitty's having a rough time today. Yeah, we don't have a definite decision on Vulcan Viewer. It's just a big, big, big project. Um, trying to get some of this uh, GLTF hierarchy stuff out first, but uh, obviously OpenGL isn't isn't the uh, isn't the cutting edge anymore, and we're going to need to look into alternatives. Uh, if you're just in the Discord, send me a DM. I'll I'll get uh, I'll get you responded to individually.
Yep, that's me, Veer. Okay, I'm just responding to DMs here. Uh, anyway, other questions, um, topics, interests, concerns? Uh, that is exposure. Um, the exposure should auto adjust in accordance to how bright it is. Uh, and this is a feature that's related to HDR, which is a feature of the uh, PBR viewer um, that, that, that allows for more range in the lights and darks. And so uh, because of the tone map, uh, that we now use, which is sort of a combination of ACES and the old linear tone map, um, the auto exposure is a, is a way to adjust uh, the brightness according to what you're currently seeing.
I don't know if there's already a request for a setting like that, but uh, if not, you can certainly send us one at the feedback site. I know historically we've had a lot of issues around getting uh, getting Fulbright to work the way that everybody expected. It's not really a normal graphics feature. It's not a standard for it or, or anything. Uh, I don't know if plans for more reflection probe shapes. What probe shapes would you want?
That's another good one to have a request for if you don't already. Cosmic, have you heard about any discussions around other shapes? Uh, hold on, I'm catching up on the on the backlog. What are you looking at? Oh, for reflection probes? Yeah, um, or yeah I, I, I think that's volume. highly unlikely. Um, I want to say Unreal Engine is the North Star in terms of the reflection, or was it Unity? Other game engines. We're looking at other game engines, and we're using that to say, okay, should we ha have this reflection probe feature? And it looks like uh, cubes and uh, rectangular prisms, sorry, rectangular prisms and spheres are the thing. Um, as for mirrors, I I suspect that we should, uh, right now it's only for rectangular prisms and we should see it enabled for uh, spheres at some point if all goes well. Uh, that's all I know. Reflection probes either do handle lo rotation. I think I think they do. They should.
Uh, we like new toys, but we do have to be a little bit realistic about the uh, scale we're operating at. We're not likely to be, uh, you know, replacing Unity or, or Blender or whatever in terms of having a larger feature set. I guess I'll put in a plug for the content creators user group. This is a good topic to kick around places like that.
Yeah, I have to say I agree with the person who says they have a son. I think that's really moving the needle on uh, on uh, the question of whether they're holding a sign or not. Real time component of puppetry. Uh I hear the subject come up every so often. I don't think we have it in any active projects right now, so uh I guess I have to say I wouldn't rule it out, but it's not uh it's not in the immediate future anyway. Yeah, we're definitely not ruling out, you know, work to improve performance. Uh, we're just trying to avoid uh, doing it in a way that compromises graphical consistency. Dave's been doing a ton of work on handling, uh, you know, getting the uh, getting the textures to load across multiple threads and getting things to work well on lower memory machines. But I'm sure there's more to be done. Open JPEG package. Uh there could be issues with that. We don't we don't routinely exercise open JPEG since we're mostly using uh, mostly using KDU. But um, if you run into issues, uh, drop us a line. And if anybody has fixes for that, we would uh, be very interested in taking them. Well, at least sounds like a fun effect. Yeah, we like to have diversity in our bugs. KDU bugs, I guess let us know about them. I mean, we can 
we can uh, contact the the uh, company about it. it. Comes down to that. You know, we've generally had good results, but uh, commercial software sometimes has bugs in it. It's not just us. All right, well, we're about the time, but thanks for coming by, everybody, and uh, a lot of good discussions, and hope you all have a good weekend.